everybody, it's me again. I'm going to be going over the comics manager tool today. It's going to be so freaking awesome. I, I spent quite some time getting used to it and all that fun stuff. It's just really neat. Uh, the person who made this, I will be linking in the description below their whole process and the thought behind it. And it, I mean, they put a lot of work into this and it's definitely, definitely just Really, I can't believe they went so far to to make this. Um, I think it's really beneficial to comic artists out there, and if you're new to it and you want to start this, I think it will save you a lot of headaches in the long run, and it kind of helps that learning curve get a little bit smaller. So let's get started. So right now, I just started a new layer, uh, or sorry, a new file. Nothing special. I didn't use any templates. I just blinked light. So we're going to go to settings and to dockers and we're going to uh, click on the comics manager and this window pops open. Now we don't have a project so we want to make a new one. However, before we start the new one, I do want to say that if you have a darker theme on, the UI colors for the new project settings, um, they're default at bright, I think. I'm not sure why. Uh, I have to look into that. It could be a bug. It could just be me. Maybe on your end it's perfectly fine. So I'm just going to switch to the creative right just until we get past that because if we don't it's kind of hard to read. So I'm going to click on this little uh, arrow here and hit new project and it's going to want me to select a folder. I just have a default new folder here and you can see my old one. Now let's just make a new one. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to delete that. So new folder. We'll call this Krita Comic Template. Just because. And we'll hit select folder. So here, as you can see, we can read all of this. If you have a darker theme, you didn't switch it yet, this might be hard to read. We, uh, we can enter it in our comic concept. So we can I'm just gonna say tutorial. And the project name, you can name it yourself or you can generate whatever you want. And these are really interesting names, let me tell you. Castor Elderberry. That sounds fantastic. So we're gonna keep that. This is a blank box. So you can pick your ink. Uh, you can pick your English. You can pick your language of, of your comic. And then you hit next. So the project directories. You can see that this is the folder I picked. This is how I would get to it on my end on my computer. If you want to change that, you need to go back and change where your folder is. Pages directory, you can change these names, but I recommend keeping them as they are just for simplicity's sake. But if you decide you want to rename pages to final pages or something like that, and then save out um, your sketch pages in a different folder or something, then that's fine too. Translations, if you have someone who can translate to different languages, maybe you need that. And templates, um, so you don't have to keep remaking the same file over and over and over again. And export is for your final product to be exported. So I'm going to leave it at default and hit finish. So now we have to open the project. So we're going to create a comic template. We're going to open Caster Elderberry. And we're going to open the comic config.json. This file is basically telling Krita all the information you need in this folder structure will be taken from here. So if you move its entire folder structure to a different computer or a different folder besides create a comic template, it knows to always look for the export pages, templates, and translations. So I'm going to open that. And as you can see, now I can click all of these other buttons. So let's take a look at the project settings. Project name, Caster Elderberry. The project concept, just tutorial. And then here I have all the default folders I made. So I'm saying, yeah, this is where Pages is going to be. And the extra keys, I'm not entirely sure what that is. I tried to find some information about it. So I'm guessing it's just extra stuff that you uh, might be using, like reference images or something. And that's fine too. So uh, I'm just going to leave it as is. And then going back to project settings, we're going to look at the metadata. There's so much in here, it's ridiculous, which is a good thing. So this cool thing is, it's got your language, and I'm just going to leave that alone because I don't need a second language. Um, you can put the title, 
of the of uh, the comic. You have a cover page. You can put your summary here. The genre, the characters, the format, the rating if there is one. Uh, they have three. They have DC, fiction ratings, and Marvel. Fiction ratings. You can actually pick one of these. DC and oh, it's working now. There you go. Uh, Marvel and DC have it in there too, which is really. I mean, that's just really neat that this person put that much effort into this. I mean, that that's really cool. And then series, so if it's volume one, if it's issue two or something like that, you put that in there as well. And then the other, any other notes. And that's just the work. Now if we go to authors, I'm going to expand this. Now a lot of comics have more than one author or guest writers or maybe other employees for this. So we can add as many authors as we want. We can put the role. So I can say issue one. Uh, we can just say short or whatever. You can change their name, put their email and their website and stuff. So that way you can always have their contact information there. That's and that's really neat. I mean, that's really helpful, especially if you're starting something new. I mean, yeah, you got your other files to keep everything together, but it's helpful to keep it all in the same comic. That way you're like, oh crap, who, who wrote this part again? You just have to open up your metadata and it's right there. And then publisher. Now if you get your comic published or you already have something published, you can put all of the information in here today. The type of licensing for it, the name of the publisher, where, they're, where they are, when it was published, stuff like that. And that is it for the metadata. I'm going to make that a little smaller again. I'm just going to hit cancel. The last option in the project settings is export settings. There are multiple export settings. Each are a little bit different. So first and foremost, we have the general, which has the final output of the size of your comic or your comic pages. And when you make a page, you can either crop to the guides that you set, or if you say, you know, I want this much taken off for the margins, then you can specify here how much you want to take off. And usually that's because you have your bleed line, your cut line, and your bleed line, you want everything within, um, anything that goes outside the bleed line gets cut off. The cut line is um, where you're actually going to cut the image. And then you have another, I forgot the name of it, another line type that will basically be your safe spot for your text and images so no matter what it won't get cut off. I mean you have to go like half an inch or something or a quarter of an inch to really try to cut it off. So this, so that's what the crop is for. The layers, if you color them you can say yeah remove these layers. Um, text layer key, panels, I wouldn't need that. That's basically saying what it's exporting uh, or how it's going to be exporting certain stuff. So these up here are just different formats to export your comic as. Now this isn't for single pages, this is for the entire comic. So if you had 10 pages, it's going to export 10 pages. This is going to be for e-readers. This is also for e-readers, but it's saved them out as PNGs and it keeps them in chronological order. There is a file called, or file, a program called Comical, which is available for Mac and PC that can read th this format. I don't know if everything can read that format or not. You would have to look into a little bit more uh, information. The AS, I guess, the ACBF is kind of, it's got more information in it. Uh, if you're familiar with these formats, you might know what to do with it. I, I personally do not. But the cool thing is you can keep your author information in there, which is neat. Uh, the TIFF, it just exports everything as a TIFF. You can still crop it. Um, if you want to go to the, deep, the type of DPI, you can change that. If you want to make it um, specific to the height and width that you're cropping it to, you can do that as well. And that's it for the export settings. So I'm not going to really do change anything, I'm going to leave it as is. 
Alright, and now we can finally get to the good stuff. Before I continue though, I'd like my eyes to go, you know, be chill, and I'm gonna go back to create a darker. That looks so much better. Alright, so now let's add a page. If we hit the drop down little icon, you can add a page. Add a page from template. Add existing pages, remove it. Battery size, view it in the window. Scrape author info and scrape text for translation. Obviously the last two are pretty self-explanatory. If you have information in that page you want taken out, you can just scrape it all together and then re-edit it or re-add it back in whenever. We're just going to add a page. We're just going to create a template. It looks good. That's fine. Whatever. Or hit OK. Now it's saving that. There is my page. So if I double if I double click on it, that opens up. So I'm just now if you look we have the sketch background and layer one. Whatever. I'm just gonna draw something real quick. Let me say it's a smiley face. And we will save that. So you can see it has my saved my last oops. My last save time and point, and you can't see that. Let me make this bolder. Save that again. There you go. Now you can see the preview of what I've drew. What I've drawn. Now you can see the preview of what I've drawn in this little preview option for that page. Now, if I want to add the description, I have to go to File Document Information and change the description here. So we'll just say smiley splash page and then hit OK. And that should update at some point. Let's add another page. Saving what I have. There's page 2. Now if I if you double click on that you're just going to be opening that page. So I've done that like 10 times by now. I think I'm crashing Krita. No, no, I'm not. Yes, I am. Alright, so I kind of crashed Krita there because I kept opening the same thing over and over again. I am sorry. Alright, so I added a new page. It's not quite updating the description yet. There were some issues that they were having getting this set up the way they want. But that's okay. Alright, so you right click, you can either add a page just like over here from template or a new one or add existing pages. So what that means is if I go to the folder where this is located, I can add other pages that I made outside of this system and copy and paste it into here. So I'm just going to mm -hmm, just take some stuff from this here. Um, let's copy that. And then I'm going to paste it into pages. So now I can add existing pages, go to the folder, and add that file. And it's there. So now whenever I open up this system, that page will always be included. Now if I remove the page, I'm only removing it from this manager. I don't delete the page, which is really nice because just because you remove it doesn't mean you want to get rid of it completely. You might be able to, to use more content from that page. And you can batch resize. So if I want to scale these down to 90%, I can do it all at once without you know, wasting my time opening each and every file. So I'm going to wait for that to process. So if you have multiple pages, it might take a little while. And then I can view page in the window. So it's kind of like a preview. So if I want to go to the first page, and then the next page, single page, I can do that. Double spread. It's a little hard because this is technically the cover, or page one. And that's kind of really nice to see. That way you can kind of get a feel for your comic before you're done. It's, it's very motivational. And then once that's done, we've got all that stuff. Uh, if you have a lot of pages, you can scale up that thumbnail or you can scale it down. So 
So if you don't care about any of the information here, you can at least go by the images, which is really useful too. And then when you're all set, you can export the comic and it's going to export in the export section. I didn't choose the export uh, setting, so it's not going to do anything. So if you also want to, um, I don't know, if you have, for some reason need to copy the location of your files, you can copy the whole folder location. So if I close this, and I paste it in here, control V, I get right to that folder structure. I guess it is helpful if you want to go add in more pages manually or whatever without opening and going through and clicking all your folders to get to it. And that's it for the comic manager. I hope this was helpful. I hope those of you who are looking to try making comics can uh, use this. It will definitely, like I said, reduce the learning curve in helping you manage the files. So you don't have to sit there go, oh my gosh, how am I going to format this? What, what, what am I supposed to do? I don't even know where to begin. At least this is a good starting point, so you don't have to worry about the organization. It does it for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And I highly recommend, again, checking out the link I'm going to be posting with this video of the person who put this together. You know, sending them a thanks and... Really thanks to Krita as well for letting this be an official tool for Krita and not just a plugin you have to download. Alright, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Share this video if you know someone who's doing comics that uh, hates doing it in the program they're in. Because this is really cool. And if you want to support me in any way, all my accounts are, or my support links are below. Click on if you'd like. Make sure to follow me on social media accounts. Sometimes I talk about what I'm going to be doing next. And I also share my artwork there. Alright, thanks again and have a good one.